Good evening, my brothers and sisters in the Lord, all over the earth. Here we are tonight again, loving speaking to you from so far away and praying tonight that this message will help every one of us to walk in the ways of the Lord and the understanding for who we are in Him. Tonight's teaching is a new creation. If you are born again, you are a new creation in Christ Jesus. Born from above within. The old person has gone, the new person has come. So we go and look at the first scripture in 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Verse 17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Now, there is so much meaning into this. And I pray that each one of you, as we're going to go through the scriptures and talk about things tonight, that you understand. And I'm not trying to judge any of you, but I'm trying to encourage every one of you who haven't had that revelation. Who hasn't had this born again experience. I can tell you very clearly the day the Lord touched me and I became born again. 4th of November 2002, 7.30 at night time. That's when the Lord came into my life. Now everybody has different understanding, but it has to be a time when you know that you know that you know that you've been touched. And if you haven't been touched, it's okay. Keep asking. Keep crying out to Him. Because everyone has to become a new creation. This is not about religion here. This is about fellowship and relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. For you to become His bride. For you to become part of His body. You can be a vital part in His body. So... Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, so are you in Christ? It says here, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. So you are a new person if you are in Christ. The old person, the flesh, it's your responsibility to keep him under your feet and keep walking in this new identity that God is giving you. You have no idea what I'm talking about. Like, I'm sure you do, but like, He called you to be His son. He called you to be His daughter. God Almighty, He wants His family. He made it possible for each one of us by only calling in the name of the Lord. Anyway. Put on the new self. That's the next scripture. Let's go to Colossians chapter 3, verse 10. And have put on the new man who is renewed in knowledge according to to the image of him who created him. Here it says to put on the new person. Let the old person away, keep the, the old person under your feet and put on the new person. Who is the new person? Who is renewed in knowledge. When you become born again, this Bible is no longer a historical book. The word 
comes life. I know many beautiful friends of mine who they are not born again yet. But yet when they try to read the word, they fall asleep. They fall asleep because they are not born again. For us, this is our food, the word of God. Who is renewed in the knowledge according to the image of him who created him. So according to the knowledge that we get for the word of God, in him, God the Father who created us. So beautiful. For you have died, and your life is hidden in Christ in God. Colossians chapter 3, verse 3. For you died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. If you, are, if you are born again, if you have become born again, you have died to the old person. God does no longer look at you the way you were before. You died to that. That person is dead. You, have a new, you are a new creation inside you now. Maybe you haven't realized that you are a new creation. Maybe you are still doing things the old way, but according to the scripture, you are dead. That person, the old person, is dead. God could not fix us. So he had to kill us. He had to kill the old person and give us a new heart and a new spirit. I mean, so much I can tell you in this story. When Adam sinned, Adam and Eve sinned, that communication between God and Adam who was talking to them every day and he was walking in the afternoon in the garden with them was cut off because of sin. So every person who was born now, born as a sinner, a little child, done nothing wrong, but born with a sin nature. That sin nature God has put it to death. And as it says here in verse 3, it says, For your death and your life is hidden with Christ in God. So now we are hitting our lives together with the Holy Spirit and God and Jesus in Christ. But you might haven't realized it yet. And you're still doing things the way you were doing it before. But it's time that you start reading the Word of God, listening to the teachings that I'm giving you, and start taking the position as a son of God, as a new creation in Christ Jesus, as a member of His body on earth. <clears throat> Now, I'm going to tell you a little story. I don't know, I don't know if you know or not, but I've been blessed by a building company. God gave me a building company, and I'm blessed. And as I started off, even before I had the, started this company, I have done some renovations. I have tried to do renovations and fix things. And when you try to fix one thing, ten more things to go wrong and fall everywhere and problems everywhere. And now, my little members of my family still tell me, let's do a renovation. And I said, no, no. I don't want no more renovations. If I want to do something, I want to build a brand new. I want to demolish whatever it is old, destroy it, and start something new with strong foundations on the ground, foundation also in God, and build this beautiful building. So the same thing with God. Could not fix the old nature. And with all the deceitfulness, all the 
depravities, all the wickedness the person has with their own nature, all the old habits, all the things that you inherit from the parents and from grand great grandparents, and all the things the devil is bringing you and enticing you. God couldn't fix you, so he had to kill you, make a new creation. Look what God did with Saul. Saul was a murderer. He was killing Christians until Jesus appeared to him on the way to Damascus. And then Paul, Saul became the new Paul. And Paul, he was a missionary, became a missionary who wrote three quarters of the New Testament in the Bible. God used him. Moses, he killed a man, an Egyptian, and ran it into the desert. And God used him to deliver the people of Israel. Me. You don't know what I was like before the 4th of November 2002. I was a womanizer. I had a wife with two children, a girlfriend with two children, and other many other women. One of the thoughts, some of the things <clears throat> that I was doing, and a lot more. I don't want to. I don't want to. I was a good person, but. Arrogant. I was prayer. I thought there's no other people on earth better than the Greeks. And God came and rescued me from myself and the and the harm that I've done to all the people that I love. So, God wants to give you a new nature, if you don't have one. He wants you to be born again. And God said, I will give you a new heart and put in you a new spirit with you. So let's look at Ezekiel 36, verse 26. Ezekiel 36, verse 26. Ezekiel 36, verse I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you. I will take the heart of stone out of your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. See, because of the problems that we're going through in life, we become, our hearts come hard and bitter. We have no compassion of any or anyone before you become born again, okay? And then when you become born again, the Holy Spirit every day playing with your heart. You have a new heart. He's giving you a new heart, but he's playing and protecting your heart around you so you don't no longer do the things that you were doing before to make your heart hard. And he gave you a new spirit. He reconnected you what was cut off from Adam and Eve, now he reconnected you again with him. So you have conversation with him or one on one through the Father, through the Son, through the Holy Spirit. And, and I was talking to my brother who's here tonight, and I was talking the other day with him, and I was saying to him, do you, do you, do you know when is he, God's talking to you, don't you? He said, yes. You know when Jesus talked to you, yes. You know when the Holy Spirit talked to you, yes. So we know, actually, without, I don't know how we know, but we know when the Father speaks, when Jesus speaks, 
only the Holy Spirit speaks. All God in three forms, but one, but everybody speaks differently. So God, God had to kill the old nature. So let's look at Colossians chapter 3, verse 3 and 4. Set your mind on things above, not on things on the earth. No, no, sorry, that's verse 2. Verse 3 and 4. For your, you died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, appears, then you also will appear with Him in glory. But God is, will not do it, will, He's not going to kill you without you agree to. He's not going to make you a new creation with that. He says yes. Because you need to believe with your heart and testify with your mouth that Jesus is Lord. God will give you the opportunity to make you a new creation. But He will never force you to become a new creation. He's not going to kill you by force. The decision is up to you. If you're willing, if you want to be a son or a daughter of the living God. Jesus came to this earth and he did all so many beautiful things. And everybody, the institution of the time God was bringing a new wife. He was bringing a new covenant. But the institution that was already in place on this earth, the Jewish institution, the Pharisees and the Sadducees, they didn't want this change. They didn't want this new covenant. They didn't want to lose the position they had they were in the marketplace and people, they were praising them and loving them and they were worshipping them instead of worshipping God. They didn't want to change that. And Jesus, which is was written on all the scriptures about the Messiah was coming, they rejected him. They didn't want him. So, let's read. So Jesus he was rejected from his own people, the Pharisees. And was it because of the lack of no miracles? There was plenty of miracles there. He raised the dead. He healed the sick. He opened the, the blind people's eyes. There was miracles there. Okay? But let's see what they were saying to him. Who were the, who the, were the same? Because they didn't want to accept him. They didn't want to change. They, and you know this can happen to every one of you. Every one of us. <coughs> we can say no to the change. Because you don't want to upset anybody around you. We don't want people to be offended because we are following Jesus. But do you want to please the people? Oh God! Who do you want to please? So let's look at Matthew 12 from verse 22 to 28. We're going to look at Then one who was brought to him, who was demon possessed, blind and mute, and he healed him, so that the blind and the mute man both spoke and saw. 
And all the multitudes were amazed and said, Could this be the son of David? Now when the Pharisees heard it, they said, This fellow does not cast out demons except by Beelzebub, the ruler of the demons. But Jesus knew the thoughts and said to them, Every kingdom against itself, divided against itself, and brought to the solution. And every city or house divided among itself will not stand. If Satan cast out Satan, he is divided against himself. How then will his kingdom stand? And if, if, if I cast out demons by Beelzebub, by whom do your son cast them out? Before they shall be your judges. Therefore they shall be your judges. <clears throat> but if I cast out demons by the Spirit of God, surely the kingdom of God has come upon you. They were trying to tell him, you're casting out demons by the devil. He says, okay. Who are your people casting a demon with? And he also said, if the kingdom, if the Satan is divided himself, cannot stand. But he said, but if I do this by the finger of God, the kingdom of God has come up on you. Did they listen? No. They did not listen. And then, <laughs> Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews came to Jesus by night time. So let's look at John chapter 3, verse 1 to 3. But I'm going to ask the question, why did he come to Jesus by night time? There was a man of Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God. For no one can do these signs than you, but unless God is with him. Jesus answered him and said to him, Most surely I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Here we have Nicodemus now, and the Bible says he was a ruler of the Jews. So he was in a very high standard in the society. He was also a Pharisee. But he came in night time. Why did he come in night time? Because he didn't want the others to see him talking to Jesus. Because they said, if, any, if, we, if we catch any of you talking to Jesus, we're going to remove you out of the synagogue. In other words, you're no longer allowed to come to church. And they didn't want to lose the status. They didn't want to lose who they were. <clears throat> you know, for me also, being orthodox, Greek, was Greek orthodox. I've been persecuted a lot, and my family, a lot of them don't even talk to me. Okay, but I personally choose to follow Jesus. I'm not going to follow any religion, or I'm not going to follow anyone who is not true. And those people. They need, actually, our help. So we need to, to push on and, and, and keep loving the people and keep talking to them and, and help them to understand that it's not the same to be in religion, and you can name the religion anything you want to call it, Orthodox, Catholic, Hinduism, Islam, whatever. There's so many religions. Very different to become a child of God. 
And here Jesus was talking to this man at night time, Nicodemus, because he was afraid to come during the day. And then, if I'm going to I'm going I'm to say a little bit more about that, because Jesus told him, you cannot see the kingdom of God unless you're born again. In verse 4, Nicodemus said to him, how can a, a man be born when he's old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Surely, most surely I say to you, unless one born of water and of a spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. What is born of flesh is flesh, and what is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I said to you that you must be born again. The wind blows wherever it wishes, and you hear the sound, but cannot tell where it comes or where it goes. So is everyone who is born of the Spirit. He said, don't think about the natural way. How can the man go back when he's old into his mother's womb? He said, think about the unity to be born of the Spirit on the water. In other words, you need to be born again to have the Spirit. And then you need to be baptized in the water. It is born of the Spirit on the water. You can't have a child baptized when he's six months old, or a year old, or one and a half year old, or two year old. It is not the child's decision to make this decision. The Bible says to be saved and be baptized. So, and he said to him also, we know when you see the trees moving, you know the wind coming, you know passing, you know. Sometimes you don't even hear the wind, but you just see the, the branches moving. You know it's the wind. The same with the Spirit. It's around us, it's on us, it's in us, and it's the Spirit of God. So I believe Nicodemus was saved and became born again. That's what I believe. Because he saw that Jesus and he said, I know that he said, I know that what you do, if it was not from God, could not happen. I know you're a teacher and I know you're from God. So obviously the man, he had more than the others. He was like his heart was right. Because I'm sure even the others they knew who Jesus was, but they didn't want to lose the positions, they didn't want to lose money, finances, and stature in their society. But what would you rather do? Follow people and go to hell? Or follow the Spirit of God and become born again and be a new creation in Christ Jesus? I think it's, it's, you can't compare it. You can only compare it. If you are born again, your citizenship is in heaven. You no longer have citizenship is here on earth. So let's go to Philippians chapter 3 verse 20. For our citizenship is in heaven, from which we are also eagerly waiting for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. But I say, I said to you, if you're born again, here he says, for our citizenship is in heaven. Yes, if you're a new creation, our citizenship is in heaven. But the question is, are you a new creation? Have you had that? transformation in your life. Have you once in your life you know something happened that God touched you and you changed? Have you called on His name? Not from the head because somebody told you to, but you led by the Spirit to say yes, I want to follow Jesus. 
Yes, I renounce the devil. Yes, I no longer want to follow religion. I want to follow Jesus. If that happens to you, you have a new citizenship in heaven because this body that we're part of it now, you can only go up to 100 years old, the most, some 80, some 70, some 90. But after that, where are you going to spend eternity? On the ground, in hell, or in heaven? Because there is not a grave. Either you go down or you go up, one or the other, whatever you call. If you, if you have not called in the name of the Lord, the devil will climb you. It's not God sending you to heaven, to, to, to hell. It's the devil's climbing you because you are not a new creation. Your sin has not been washed by the blood of Jesus. So therefore, you're sinful and he has a right to climb your life, your soul, for eternity in hell with himself. I hope you understand it. We must walk as children of God in the light. Let's look at Ephesians chapter 5, verse 8. For you were once darkness, but now you are a light in the Lord. Walk as children of the light. He says here clearly that once, before you became born again, you're in darkness. But now you have the light of the Lord. But it says also, so walk as children of the light. I know, but for myself, Satan had a noose around my neck. He used to take me anywhere he wanted to take me before I was born again. But now he can't take me wherever I don't want to go. I choose not to follow him. I choose to be a child of the light. It's a choice. And we have the ability now, because he has nothing on us. If you're born again, he can't hold you anymore. I've seen so many people who have been, the, their family has been destroyed. In my own family, I'm talking about people who gambling, destroyed the whole, the whole family. All that is because they're not born again. If you're all born again, the devil has no hold on you. I was a womanizer. There was a sickness in me. After I became born again, I don't have that problem anymore. And other people have other issues. There's so many different things. So learn to walk. He's given the ability, and it's your choice to walk as a child of the light. Why? Because you represent him. You said a Christian. You say you're a Christian. What does it mean? Christian. Christ like. <coughs> That's what it means. You have to be like Christ. How was Christ? Are you walking as Christ did? And if you're not, change your ways to be a child. Of the light. So God looks at you there and says, look at my child. Look at him. <coughs> and even when the devil comes to, to, to accuse you, because the devil still goes to accuse in heaven the children of God. He goes to accuse, but God says to him, look at my child. And then when do you do something wrong, Jesus steps in and says, Dad, I'll buy for him with my blood. So Jesus, the Bible says, price for you when you do something wrong. Also, the Holy Spirit says also price for you. I think it's I think it's um, in Romans 8:26 when the Holy Spirit 
Christ for you, for us. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. So we do not know what we should pray for, and we add, but the Spirit Himself makes intercession for us with groaning which cannot be uttered. The Holy Spirit cry out to God for us. And, and here I think it's in 32. <coughs> in verse 34. Who is who condemns? Is Christ who died? And furthermore, he's also risen and even at the right hand of God who also makes intercession for us. So as I said to you, and then in 35 he says, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? Can I separate you from the love of God? No. You are in Christ. So, even when you don't want to walk in the light, Jesus and the Holy Spirit prays for you. Why? Because He has deposited inside you the Holy Spirit guarantee your salvation. I know many people talk about that you can lose your salvation, but that's not true. That's not scripture, that's not true. God will not send Himself to hell. Because the Holy Spirit lives inside you. He cannot send him and he says, I will never leave you, nor will I forsake you. So he cannot send himself to hell. So your salvation is guaranteed. But I would rather walk as a champion of God on this earth or as a defeated Christian all the time. God doesn't want to just to patch us up, okay? He wants to remake us completely into the likeness of Christ. Can He do that? Yes, He can. If you say yes, He done it. <clears throat> now, our all men was crucified with Christ on the cross. So let's look at Romans chapter 6, verse 6. Knowing that this, that our old man was crucified with him, that that the body of sin might be done away with that we should no longer be slaves to sin. You don't need to be a slave to sin no longer. Your flesh was crucified with Jesus. Your sin was crucified with Jesus on the cross the day when he died. All sin was up on him to the point where his father changed the He's back on him. And darkness come to the whole earth for six hours. Because why? Because all sin of all humanity for everyone was on that cross. Nailed to the cross, the Bible says. With him. The only thing that you need to do is call on his name. If you ever call on his name, call on his name and say, Jesus, save me. I reject the devil. I want you, Lord Jesus. Save me. Because the Bible says in Romans chapter 10, verse 8 to 13, He says, you, you, you believe in your heart, not in the mind, believe in your heart, and testify with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, your Lord. In other words, you decide you no longer want to be a slave to sin. You no longer want to be a person who goes to hell. You want to follow Jesus. So therefore, you come off the cross. 
Everything else on the cross until everybody, until somebody says, I want to follow Jesus. I can't do it on my own. I need Him. I need His blood. I need Him to wash me clean from my sins. So God did not want to patch us up. And, go, and the old man is, was crucified with him. If you're new, if you're new creation, your old self is to be crucified with Jesus. You might not know it, you might not believe it, you might not walk in it, but that's what happened. Because God, because you said yes to Jesus. That's it. He did it for you. He did it all for you. God is calling us to be imitators of Him. So let's look at Ephesians chapter 5, verse 1 and 2. children and walk in love as Christ also has loved us and gave himself for us and offering a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling aroma God says to you and me I want you as if you, if you call yourself to be my son as you say I'm a son of God if you say I'm a child of God he said, to imitate me. So how is God? God is holy. God is love. God is all beautiful things. So he's expecting you and me to be like him. And he said also for Jesus to walk as Jesus walked. And he, Jesus walked and gave himself for us. And because he sacrificed himself, it was a sweet aroma to God. He sacrificial. Because why? Because God done away with sin. Even sacrificing his own son was done away with sweet aroma, sacrificial to God, a, smell, a sweet smelling aroma before God. Jesus was. I'm going to do one more scripture. This is session one. We're not going to be able to finish it tonight. So we're going to do one more scripture and then we. We we'll start again, continue next week. The last scripture for the night. Are you willing to sacrifice your flesh? Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. This is what Paul. He did, he said, this murderer that God rescued and he made him missionary, this is what he said. I have been crucified with Christ. It's no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. <clears throat> it's a choice for each one of us to say, you know what? I'm going to crucify myself as crucified it. I'm going to crucify, not literally crucify yourself on, 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 as Jesus did, but I'm talking about crucify the flesh, the desires that are not right with God. And he says, I no longer live. Paul said, it's Christ who lives inside me. Can that happen for you and me? Yes, it can. Why? Because Jesus lives inside you. The Holy Spirit lives inside of you. You've been baptized into Christ. There is three, there is three baptism in Christ. Salvation, water, baptism of the Spirit. If you have those three things, 
you are full in Christ. So yes, then you can crucify the flesh if you want to crucify it. And he's not going to say, I no longer live, but Christ lives inside me. Why? And he says, the life that I never live, in the flesh, I live by faith. In the Son of God, who loved me. So I got to take it personal. Jesus loved me. He died for me. And Jesus, if it wasn't for Jesus, I know I was going to hell. I know I was going to commit suicide. And I know I was going to be in hell for eternity. I knew I was going to be in hell for eternity. So he rescued me and came and loved me. And I smelled his beautiful sweet aroma. And I received his love coming towards me as wives of love. And to the point that I was going, <gasps> But you can, we all can, <clears throat> to walk by the Spirit, not in the flesh. God bless you all. Have a blessed night and day, whatever you might be on earth. And we'll see you next Tuesday to continue session two. Good night from Sydney, Australia.